In this session, we're going to look at how we can tie a driveway into a corridor in an area where we have sidewalk. On my screen, I have a sample corridor. Currently, this is symmetrical. If I zoom in on the assembly, you can see this was created from a lane on either side. I've got a type F curb and gutter on either side, as well as a simple daylight. I would like to put some sidewalk here on the right side, so let's remove the daylight. I'm going to come over to the assembly and I'll select this. I'll press delete. I will then select my corridor and then I'll come up and click the Rebuild button. This gives me a clean slate on the right side. Next, I'm going to create some geometry to represent the area where I'm going to have sidewalk. I'll do that by offsetting the center line. I'll launch the Offset command, and then my distance is going to be 21. I'll select the alignment, and I'll offset this over. I will then press the spacebar to go back into the command. We'll offset this polyline I just created 4 feet. So this geometry represents the location and the width of my sidewalk. I'm going to change the color of this just to make it stand out a little bit so we know the geometry that's going to represent targets. I'll make these magenta for right now. And then we'll come back up to the assembly. So I'm going to be creating driveways. I'm not going to have driveways everywhere. I'm going to have two different conditions, the driveway condition and then the non-driveway condition. If I don't have a driveway, I'm going to have sidewalk. So I'm going to start by creating some conditional targets here on the right side of my assembly. I'll select the assembly and then I'll click the tool palette button. I'm going to right click on the tool palette name and I'll go to Civil Imperial Subassemblies. And then on the conditional tab, I'm going to grab one of these conditional horizontal targets and I'll snap one of these to the top back of curb. This is going to represent target found. So if you find the driveway target, this will be the condition that you create at that location. I want a not found condition as well. I'm still in the command. Let me go over to my properties palette and I'll change this to target not found. I'll click that marker. So in the event you don't find a driveway target, I want you to create the sidewalk condition. So now that I've created my two conditions, I'm going to give these logical names quickly. Let me select this one and I'll say not found. This will make things a little bit easier to understand when we're assigning targets later. Let me select the other one and we'll call this one found. There we go. So in the event you find the driveway target, let's build the driveway. Once again, I'm going to right click on the tool palette name and I'm going to come down to F dot subassemblies and then I'm going to right click on the stack here and I'm going to bring up the urban tab. I'm going to start by placing slab one. This will represent the concrete from the top back of curb all the way up to the sidewalk. Then I'll place slab two. This will represent the slab in the sidewalk area and then I'll place slab three. This will be the slab from the sidewalk that ties back down to the existing driveway. Now, let me select slab one for a second. I'll go over to properties. Let me drag this down. We can see that this represents a G15 driveway. There are other options here. If I pick these, the shape of this will change. It is important to note the elevation that represents the slope. I'm going to draw a line here real quick from the end point. Let me lock my ortho and I'll drag this over and then let's just do a quick distance. Distance from the end point here perpendicular to this line, 0.553. When we create our targets we want to make sure that the slope of this driveway maintains that 0.553 elevational difference here in slab 1. Keep that number in mind. So there's our driveway condition. Now if you don't find the driveway target we need the non-driveway condition. I'm going to start with slab one. Now that may seem unusual. Why are you starting with a slab if you don't want the driveway? Well, there will be some places where I want a little bit of driveway in the flange areas. In the event this slab does not find a target, it will have no width, so it will not display. So we'll look at this condition in a little bit. Let me add my sidewalk now. We'll add that to the edge. Perfect. Finally, let's put a couple daylights on these. So I'm going to right click on the stack and I'll bring up the daylight tab. We'll just do a simple daylight at the end of each. Now that I have my assembly built with my two conditions, let's update the corridor. I'm going to start by creating the sidewalk. We'll take care of these targets for my sidewalk first. I'll select the corridor and I'll go to corridor properties. Under parameters, here under this region, this is the only region I have, I'm going to come down and click the target ellipsis button and then we'll find the back and front of sidewalk horizontal targets. Let's do the back of sidewalk first. I'll click in the field, I'm going to select the target from the drawing. I'll select the geometry that represents the back of walk and I'll press enter. I'll click OK and then we'll take care of the front. I will select that from the drawing and I'll press enter. Let's click OK. Let's take care of our surface targets. I did add some additional daylights. We also added slab 3. That one has a surface target as well. So we'll point all these to the existing ground for right now. Let me click OK and I'll click OK and we'll rebuild the corridor. 
So there we go. As I pan this down, you can see I now have sidewalk on the right side, and that sidewalk is matching the targets that I created. So next thing we're going to do is place a driveway. Let's place one right around station 2 plus 50. To place the driveway, I'm going to insert a dynamic block. I'll type insert, and I've already got the block in the drawing, but in the event this is the first time you were placing one, you'd click the browse button, and then you'd go to the C drive under f.2015.c3d. Inside that directory, you'll find a data folder, and inside the blocks folder, you'll find the driveway block. Now, I've already got mine in the file, so let me just open the menu, and I'll come down and choose driveway. When I place this, I want to specify the insertion point. I'm going to make sure the rest of these settings remain unchecked, and I'll click OK. This is a dynamic block, so it will align itself to the geometry. I'm going to place this at the end point here. Now, it is flipped incorrectly. Not a problem. I'm going to mirror this. We'll just mirror this object from the end point here to the end point here. And I'll press Y for yes. I want to delete the original. So there's my driveway location. Since this is a dynamic block, it represents multiple driveway conditions. If I click this lookup table, we can see all the driveways this supports. For this example, we're going to go with the G15. G15 lines up perfectly with our sidewalk geometry. Now that I have the driveway in position, let me do a quick regen here, I'm going to create some targets. One to represent where the curb and gutter is going to be lowered. I want to create a target that represents the edge of slab one. That's the slab from the back of curb to the sidewalk. I want to create one more target that represents the area where it's going to draw slab two and slab three. To create my targets, I'm going to go to the feature line menu. I'll choose create feature line. I'm going to give this a logical name. I'm going to call this CG Drop Zone. And we'll go with the generic feature for right now. That's fine. Let me click OK. And I'll draw this from the end point here. We'll accept the elevation. Let me turn off my ortho. And I'll drop the other one at the end point here. We'll accept the elevation. And I'll press Enter to get out of the command. So this feature line is going to represent a horizontal target. Elevation wise, doesn't matter. This next one, the slab, this one is going to be an elevational target as well, so we will have to come back and tweak these elevations in a little bit. Let me create the next feature line. We'll call this slab 1. And I'll go from the end point here. Enter, here, enter, here, enter, here, enter, and enter to finish. Press Enter again. We'll create one more. We'll call this one slab 2 and 3. Let me click OK, and we'll go from here. Enter, here, enter. Now that I've created my targets, I don't need the dynamic block anymore. I'm just going to select that and delete it. We can see the geometry here that I'm going to be using. OK, let's start pointing to these targets now. I'm going to select the corridor, and then I'll go to Corridor Properties. And then here in the region, I'll open up the target settings. And I'm going to start with Found and Not Found first. Let's do Found. This represents a driveway condition. I'm going to select that target from the drawing. If you find this target right here, this means you're going to draw a driveway. And that driveway is going to have slab 1, slab 2, and slab 3. So I'll select that feature line and press Enter. Not found. Select from drawing. It's going to be the same target. In the event you don't find this target, you are not going to draw the driveway. That being said, you may have to draw a little bit of driveway here. This is why it was important to have that driveway slab in the non-driveway state. So you may have a little bit of that in addition to the sidewalk, but this is your target. Let me click OK. Now let's take care of the drop curb. You can see there's actually two of them here. You want to make sure you pick the correct one. We're going to use the drop curb trigger line on the right side. Let me click in that field. I want to select that from the drawing. And that is going to be right there. That identifies the target where the curb will be dropped. I'll press Enter and I'll click OK. Now we're going to do the back of slab 1 target. Let me click. We're going to select that from the drawing. And I'll select my feature line. This is the back of slab 1. Remember, this is a horizontal and a vertical target. So let me come down here. We'll find back of slab 1. And I will get that select from drawing. Since it's a 3D object, I can use it for horizontal and vertical. Same geometry. Let me come down and click OK. Now there's actually two back of slab 1s. Remember, the slab 1 also exists in the non-driveway state. So I've got to do this twice. You can see there's another one here. Let me grab this one, select the target from the drawing. I'll select this one and press Enter. We'll come down and we'll get the remaining vertical for back of slab 1. We'll select that from the drawing and I'll press Enter. I'll click OK. Now we can take care of the back of slab 2 offset target. So this is going to determine where the slab 2 is going to be drawn. I'm going to select that from the drawing. That's going to be right here. In this area you will draw slab 2. I'll click OK. Trigger slab 3. Select from drawing. 
Same target, this is going to show where it's going to draw slab 3, that's to the outside of the sidewalk. Let's click OK. There we go, all of my targets are set. I'm going to click OK. Let's go to frequency for a second. Adjacent to offset target and start an ad. In this case, I'm going to say no. I don't want the extra frequency insertions. I am going to create some of my own assembly insertions here. So let me click the add button. And I want to add an insertion here at the end point right at the corner. And let's add another one right there at that corner. I'll press enter. You can see those two stations. These represent the edges of the flange. They're actually right at the edge of the driveway. Now, I already have insertions at these locations. I'm going to push these out. Let's move this a hundredth out. Let's make this 243.99, and we'll make the next one 256.01. Perfect. Let me click OK. Let's rebuild the corridor. OK, things are looking good. Let's adjust the elevation of this feature line now. I'm going to start by selecting the corridor, and I'm going to select it by this assembly, the one close to the driveway, and then I'll come up and choose Section Editor. Since I selected it from that location, you can see that's where I'm starting here. Let's zoom in, and I am going to choose Zoom to an Offset and Elevation, kind of lock that location on screen. And then we can see where we're at. Let's walk over to the driveway. I'm going to click the arrow button. And you can see at this very first station here, the elevation of that feature line is incorrect. I would like the elevation of that feature line to be the same elevation of the top back curb here, which is 860.78. What we'll do is select the feature line, and then I'll come up in the Edit Elevation panel, and I'll choose Elevation Editor. I apologize for my screen size here. Let me hover. This is 860.78. 860.78, there we go. I'm just going to drag this down for a second. Let's go back to the section editor and we will walk to the corner now. Let's get the elevation here. I'm going to zoom in and hover. This is elevation 860.59, but remember we have to take care of the slope. That's going to be 860.59 plus 0.553. That equals 861.14. There we go. Let me pull this back down. And then we'll jump to the next corner. Let me zoom in. This elevation is 860.79. So that will be 860.79 plus 0.553, 861.34. Let's pull this down. And then finally, we want to get the elevation here at the end. Let me walk down to that station. Let's zoom in. I'll hover. This is 861.31. You can see I've added that right there. Let's close this. And then on the Prospector tab, I'm going to come down to Corridors. Let's right click on the corridor and I'll choose Rebuild. There we go. That looks good. Let's back up here a second. And I am going to back up to the beginning of the driveway. There we go. So right here at the beginning, we can see the slab is starting. Go again. We can see the slope going up. We have the sidewalk. And then we jump right to the driveway. Next jump, we're at the middle of the driveway. Here we're at the edge of the driveway. And then we are jumping over to where we're at the flange. And then we're back down to where the driveway is gone. Let me zoom in. The only piece of the puzzle we have to adjust here is our feature lines for the sidewalk are not running right up against the driveway. Let's fix that. I'm going to close the section editor. Remember when we added the extra frequency insertion, we moved this over a hundredth. I did that to pull these feature lines over. This way the sidewalk would end right before the driveway and then it would pick up again right after the driveway. Sometimes this 100th gap isn't enough. Let's edit this. I'm going to select the corridor. I'll go to Corridor Properties. Let me click the Frequency button. So here's the frequencies that we created. So this one's already backed off 100th. I'm going to back it off a total of 5 hundredths. We're going to make this 0.95. And then I'm going to push this one over a total of 5 hundredths. So instead of going over 100th, we're going to go over 5. Let me click OK. OK, and we'll rebuild. There we go. So in some cases, you may have to have a 500th gap here in order to get the sidewalk to butt up against the edge of the driveway. 
one last time we will select this and go to section editor let's zoom in and we will lock that location zoom in here and we'll tip this over so there's where the driveway starts flanging out there's right up against the driveway we still have sidewalk here we have the driveway middle of the driveway edge of the driveway here's where the flange starts right at the edge and then the flange is heading back down and then we have the driveway removal let me close this we'll select the corridor and I'm gonna click the top left hotspot on the view cube we'll orbit this around and we'll take a look at this driveway in 3D.